and we're live. Uh, welcome to Glee and Democracy. Button. Really? No <laughs> way! <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> we are recording. I'm not stopping this call. <laughs> welcome to Glee and your browsers. Directly. My weekly one. call <laughs> for the 28th of. July, I believe, 2020. <laughs> nice try, Jessica. Thanks, sorry. <laughs> Did you hit the cancel button? No, if you're typing as uh, screen recording starts, sometimes it takes a key and then goes to oh, the cancel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it happens fairly often, unfortunately. All right. Let's see if I'm able to do some advanced stuff like sharing my screen and Telling people about um, cleaning services. Why not? <laughs> um, all right, this is like a quick update. We got uh, a bit refreshed and updated uh, API spec. Uh, it's in the phase where people are uh, some cleaning services are actively start like actively started implementing this API. Uh, so the spec is at the link I've uh, posted in the notes. Uh, there's like a little bit more context on the pin lifecycle um, and overall the way we present uh, API it's probably much better than it was before we are now able to tra traverse data structures for example like here if you query for multiple results you can see that there's like an array of results and each object is pin status object and then you got a pin object here with the P CID that's actually pinned um, so it should be easier to learn by exploration using this. And uh, just to quickly note, uh, we started gathering some feedback from uh, pinning services, which will be implementing this. And there are two open uh, pull requests um, to make changes to the API. Uh, one is to add timestamp with moment uh, the pin request enters the pinning service. And that's important for multiple reasons. One, it uh, make it easier for users to uh, find pins which are recent. And more importantly, it makes a pagination um, more deterministic. Now when results are sorted by the creation date, uh, it's, more, it's easier to uh, traverse a huge pin sets with thousands of pins without skipping anything. Um, also, uh, we removed the uh, manual uh, offset uh, parameter, which was in the place of time-based parameters. So if anyone is interested on, on this change, uh, please provide feedback on the PR. We probably will merge it uh, around Wednesday un unless there are like some concerns which needs to be addressed. And the second uh, open issue is uh, simplifying access token spec. So, so far we supported both HTTP header and uh, uh, query parameter and this pull request simplifies the, that and we will only have HTTP header. Uh, so those are two pending changes. Uh, they don't really change much how the API works but are um, uh, directly addressing feedback we've got so far from uh, implementers. Um, yeah, so that's on the on the API uh, spec side. Uh, work on the Go IPFS side uh, to implement client for this started. Uh, we are in the planning phase. Probably get will get, have uh, some updates next time. Uh, I mentioned this. Um, I think that's it. Um, any questions regarding cleaning services? I don't no. think so. All right. Uh, I kept my screen sharing because uh, there's um, a bounty, which is pretty, pretty cool. I wanted to mention that those improvements are coming. Uh, so we got a contribution with uh, directory uh, page, uh, the directory listing page. Uh, improvements and long story short, uh, the improvements are uh, the, uh, on, in the header, the content path, each. 
I listed yeah. him in the highlights. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, I'll paste him in. Okay. Yeah. So like, there are uh, the highlights. Yeah. Uh, yep. So uh, the breadcrumbs are now clickable. Uh, you can jump to the arbitrary uh, level of the path. And there is a column with CIDs uh, here. Uh, I believe that's it. I wanted to share. Also, file sizes are in the header. Oh, yeah. 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 Directory file sizes are in the header. So. Yeah. And a lot of improvements happen behind the scenes. Just Jessica made it much less painful to uh, maintain uh, this uh, module, which is responsible for rendering uh, directory listing. I I looked at it and we may be able to improve it even further, but I did not want to like totally uh, entire, like block that uh, bounty. Yeah. So we'll pr probably after that bounty is merged, uh, we may uh, move away from the Git submodule, which is okay. like right now, that's just like submodule in Go IPFS repo, which is no longer necessary. It was like necessary due to like legacy reasons, but now we could uh, make it just a regular Go module which okay. should make things easier for everyone. Yeah, so that's coming to probably, I, I want to squeeze that into Go IPFS 0.7. Uh, hopefully that will awesome. land in uh, both Go IPFS and IPFS desktop at some point. That also includes uh, like the Favicon and stuff, which did not make it into Go IPFS. So you're actually getting the previous generation of changes if we can get that in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is, like, that's the problem with submodule. It's Unless someone is uh, bumping the submodule and committing that, and after co the committing that, regenerates uh, like the binary data for directory listing, the change will not be populated. Yeah. So that's super painful yeah. and easy to yeah. skip. Yeah, and I had, made, I had made the PR, but again, it's like, do we really want to release a whole new version of Go IPFS just for that as well? So Yeah. Cool. Fun times will land at some point, hopefully. <laughs> uh, yeah, directly, do you want to talk about uh, IPFS oh, sure. perf improvements? Yeah, um, so Alex landed a patch to fix a uh, buffering problems that was happening in the JS IPFS. Uh, so now that it's there, you can update stuff on the web UIs uh, to take advantage of it, but it ended up in a cascade of things that need to happen. Um, so right now I have a pull request to rip out the Redux bundle, uh, IPFS Redux bundle uh, that comes with its own IPFS, which is also old and honestly doesn't really do as much. So this pull request removes that and starts using the IPFS provider instead. Uh, However, I'm having some problems with testing and I'm not exactly sure what's going on there yet. Uh, I'll, once I'll figure out, hopefully we can land this. Once this is in, uh, then I'll actually upgrade IPFS to the new one, but there's a little bit of work to be done in terms of, uh, I think it's on an older version with a different IPFS API. So uh, every place we use IPFS needs to update it, be updated to use a new API. Uh, once that's done as well, um, then I can update the pull request that I wrote originally to do the uh, web UI patch to do the uploading because there's also buffering happening in the web UI. So we'll have to remove that too and upgrade to new IPFS. Um, once that is done, uh, I'll write a patch for the HTTP client because right now it uses uh, fetch APIs. It doesn't provide any progress upgrades, updates uh, at all. Uh, so I'll be switching that to uh, XML HTTP requests, which does have a progress events. And so once that is done, then we can update web UI to integrate those events so we can render the progress bar on file uploads. Um, the reason those are separate tasks, so we can like paralyze hopefully some of it. Um, uh, you mentioned the problems with tests. Were those related to that library KY or something else? Yeah, so I'm not sure. Oh, I, it, I don't even know where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah. like the context is that we, at, we used KY at some point in HTTP client and, and GSIPFS, uh, but it turned out it, there, it was like uh, too bleeding edge. And, and we, I think we don't no longer use it. However, web UI may be using the older version of libraries, which are still impacted by that problem. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, I was trying to avoid uh, updating uh, IPFS without changing the API. Maybe I can combine those two patches into one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like don't spend time on anything KY related because it was like removed and fixed uh, in the latest versions of uh, HTTP okay. client or uh, core API. So yeah. Well, maybe then one of you can review the pull request that is uh, linked in the notes. Yep. And if you can land it without that, uh, I, I can also, I guess, do another patch on top of it that will upgrade IPFS. So hopefully at least that way we can test it. Um, uh, we don't have a CI test running in the web UI. Is that never was the case or is that? Mm -hmm. We should have like end-to-end -end tests for each screen. Uh, I noticed that my pull request didn't run anything. So oh. maybe we should enable it somewhere. Okay. Uh, maybe there's some other reason, but I'm not sure what's going on yet. Uh, okay, we'll take a look. Um, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. all on my end. Yeah, uh, this uh, endeavor to upgrade to the latest JS API, like programmatic JS API, which um, which you will be uh, doing in WebUI. Uh, I hit, I've, I've hit a similar problem with Companion, which is using the old one, and uh, there's another issue on the agenda, which is uh, Sekayo deprecation. Uh, I believe like in Go IPFS 0.7, it will be either like, removed uh, or disabled by default. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem is uh, we use, uh, embed like in Brave, uh, you can opt in to embedded JS IPFS and that JS IPFS has access to TCP sockets. And Due to that fact, uh, it actually can connect to uh, peers which announce themselves uh, on the DHT. So we enable delegated uh, peer uh, and content routing modules uh, from the P2P. Um, okay. And long story short, sorry, so the, Brave nodes can be the delegated nodes? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, no, it's like the no. Brave uh, is using, yeah, uh, Brave is using our uh, pub public delegated nodes, which are also preload nodes. Uh, for like delegated DHT effectively. Okay. Um, and the problem is uh, that relies on a browser node being connected to delegate node the moment it uh, executes that call. And uh, right now those connections are handled over Sekayo, I believe. Uh, okay. So that may be a problem when, um, and, and also when you, the, it tries to connect to remote peer, that peer is probably Go IPFS. Uh, so when Go IPFS 0.7 ships, uh, that means uh, JS IPFS nodes, which are older, like the one in Brave, won't be able to connect to Go IPFS. Uh, so that's just, uh, mm, I, I mentioned it because the plan is to uh, ship Go IPFS 0.7 uh, like around the end of August. Uh, and we, sh we, we should like finish this migration uh, before that happens uh, to avoid that. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm a little lost. So, which migration? Uh, ju uh, just general mig migration of um, embedded JS IPFS in Brave. It's a part of Companion. Uh, there's a, like okay. open PR. I only mention it in case someone is running uh, like Go IPFS uh, from master uh, or using the release candidate and they experience problems uh, with that. Uh, like with connecting to that, that's why it's because Sekayo is no longer a thing. Uh, JS IP, like entire JS ecosystem, JS P 2 p is switching to noise, I believe. Uh, yeah. And and there's a, a discussion about like uh, enabling noise uh, noise in uh, older versions, but the threshold of what, up to which all the version is possible is the moment we switch to this new API. So. Uh, you need to use this new uh, API where there are like async iterators and stuff uh, to leverage noise. Uh, so far, there are no plans to backport uh, it to the older versions. I see. So that's sort of like a so hard incentive to upgrade, I'd say. Uh, but that's like a breaking change in, if someone is using JS APFS and relies on connectivity with Go nodes. So, uh, just to be make sure that I fully understand, this is remark, but it there's nothing on the web UI that we need to do to not run into that problem, right? It's I believe unrelated. it's uh, yeah, I believe it's unrelated to companion. 
uh, and specifically to companion in Brave. Um, I looked all over like all, all the other places in our GUI applications and, and stuff, and we don't like it. We are not impacted. That's the only like overlap with this problem. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, cool. Uh, next one. Uh, Sounds like someone wants to demo navbar rework. How does that sound? I don't. I don't have it on my local. You want to give me a minute? I'll bring it. <laughs> I'll launch it. But um, I don't have it running right now. I can walk you through the screenshots on the PR though. Are fine. It looks okay, the same I will the do that. Oh yeah, always looks exactly the same with the screen. All right. Yep. Yeah. So, fourteen clicks later. All right, can you, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so basically what this is doing is, this started out as needing to give us somewhere to launch the welcome screen from. And then after conversations, I believe with Raphael a little while ago, we talked about the expand collapse functionality in the nav bar just like really being kind of pointless. So what this PR does is really streamlines the nav bar at both widths and also gives us an affordance, something that we can click on to launch the welcome screen content that we want to handle in 1463, which will be instrumental to onboarding new users. So this is what it looks like at desktop width. Um, basically, it brings the text underneath, uh, gives adds a little bit of vertical space, but not a whole, whole lot. Um, just tightens up the whole thing overall. This cube is no longer clickable to expand collapse the um, that, that nav bar, but it does take you to the welcome screen which right now you never ever see except on first launch. Um, this is how it looks on mobile. The nice thing about mobile is this actually gives us less side-by-side -side scroll and narrow widths in that menu. Um, Raphael, I think you're okay with it. Lytle, I think you've had a quick look, um, but I would appreciate a final review for you before I make it real. Um, uh, I tested it on my setup, which is useful because I have uh, <laughs> a non-standard phone setup. So, so. yeah. Uh, okay. And it looks fine. So that's good. All right. That's good. All right. Uh, okay. uh, the only uh, nuance is that um, I'm not sure if I commented it or was about to comment uh, in a review, but uh, uh, the welcome screen you mentioned. Yes. Uh, I realized you can get, I think you can get to that screen by clicking the top right corner. There's this like connection. Yeah, button. the up, down, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but I th think it's fine. Uh, it's even like better because uh, intuitively when you like, click on the, the cube, you want to sort of like maybe switch to different cube, I don't know. <laughs> it's also consistent with what we're doing in yeah. Companion. Yeah. Um, I just want to I, I want to get started on that welcome screen because I'm not entirely sure what needs to go in there at this point and then also we'll want to make changes some of that content appears in other locations like if you have on the files page when you don't have any files um, so that's that's probably going to take a little bit longer than I would think so yeah. this uh, sort of like a the the main use so far or like the, the origin of that screen was uh, what happens when you uh, are if uh, offline state or when your node suddenly goes offline uh, that screen the, that welcome page yep connection <laughs> problem page yep so, yep uh, important to keep that uh, yeah and it's and it's sort of strange because you end up in that situation where it's like you know, are do you have cores requests enabled and then over on the right hand side it's like what is ipfs and so that's kind of some mixed messaging so i want to pull apart where are all of those and i believe they're sort of, those are sort of componentized to agree a degree and i want to see where all of those bits appear elsewhere in the app and when yeah oh speaking oh. about components uh, just piggybacking back to uh, what iraq mentioned that uh, parts of web UI needs to be refactored to the new API. Uh, IP, IPLD Explorer is a separate component. It's a separate NPM dependency. Uh, and I believe it's using the old API. I'm not sure if the, oh, the good DAG, point. Yeah, if the DAG API actually changed 
So that's yeah, like yet another layer of work, but uh, we can discuss that separately, I, I guess. Uh, oh, so that means I have to do stuff there too. I haven't done <laughs> yet, so I'll yes, show that my list. I feel yeah, the so explorer is a nesting doll. <laughs> yeah, that's why no one wanted to touch this because <laughs> it's like never-ending story. Uh, well, I didn't I think... want to touch it either. I just went to make the upload. Yeah, work. Uh, we re no, like we recently were successful with releasing new IPLD explorer, so I, I'm able to like help. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, is I, there I, a reason? I... It needs to be a separate like repository and everything. Like every time we have to do this uh, threading through the packages, it becomes uh, yeah. larger yeah. endeavors than it needs to be, I feel. The idea was folks might be embedding it into other contributor third-party projects. Um, I don't know what the usage actually uh, is though. Yeah, so that was like an initial uh, thinking, but later we realized the problem we are, you just mentioned and uh, we stopped at IPLD Explorer. So IPLD Explorer is useful on its own. There's like explore.ipld.io yeah, 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 website. Remember. And it's using the same component. So the same component is uh, used on that website and inside of web UI, uh, but that's the only component which we actually extracted to a separate package. Uh, mostly because we realized, oh, that's actually introduces a lot of overhead. So we... Uh, maybe something like what JSIPRS does with multiple packages in one repo could be helpful. At least that you can write a pull request and it changes all of them and you don't have to like coordinate multiple pieces. Uh, I think that's what creates a coordination issue because first this needs to go in before you can pull it in here and then like you end up stacking things up. But if it's in one place and you can send them even if they are released as separate packages. Yeah. Uh, it Honestly, it makes sense to think about this. Maybe like mid-term, long-term, uh, because we yeah. have like, uh, Explorer is one thing. We also got this CID, uh, that IPFSIO website, which is separate. Uh, we got a, like a DAG or files one, which is not advertised much, but those things could be part of web UI, uh, like one big repo. They could be uh, also separate websites, but having something like, uh, like in JS APFS would be much easier, like much better experience than right now. Uh, and there's this problem we have right now, especially with those things which require, like which operate on lower level uh, primitives like CIDs or multi hashes or multi codecs. When we add something new, the time it takes to bubble up to that end product, that website or that component uh, is painfully long and you need to make sure it's bubbled up to all of them. So if we had like one central place it would remove the friction um, oh yeah because you might wind up with the two different versions i guess and then yeah, yeah we it, and it was extremely problematic in case of uh, ipld explorer because you could have on the website it's spawning its own embedded js apfs and that could be a different version of api than the one uh, in web ui where you have http client uh, yeah Some, something to think about <laughs> Cool. Um, so we'll review the navbar. Promise. Thank you. Uh, can I ask you about the navbar? Yep. Is a uh, is it supposed uh, to scroll in the mobile, the top one, or is it? Yeah, it's a left-right scroll. There's not a more elegant way of doing that without ripping it out entirely, which is on my longer-term agenda. But um, but at least there's far less side-by-side -side scroll than there was. Yeah. I, I play with it on the Firefox for Android and it looks better than before. Yeah. 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 Uh, another question was how do you actually use uh, web UI in mobile? Is That's a great web... question. <laughs> you don't, you can't connect to anything, can you? Uh, you can run. You can connect uh, to your... Sorry, yeah. sorry. Well... Go on, Rafael. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think the Ectric already did it once. So he, he just opened Web UI on the browser and connected to his in internal IP on this uh, node on this computer. So since you're in the same router, you can as access if you allow the origin to. But it's wouldn't it like. A bit of work. Wouldn't it prevent you from HTTPS to HTTP, though? Like as a mixed content, it should be blocking, I would guess. That I do well, not know. Well, if you load it from that remote 
uh, origin that origin is uh, oh from that gateway okay okay yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, honestly there there are, uh, for Android there are um, uh, distributions of IPFS I think it, one is called Sweet IPFS another one is like IPFS Droid and you are ra effectively running Go IPFS on your phone and then you are on the local host. So you just open that local host page. Okay. Um, that's what I was using for, um, uh, I was using uh, that uh, local node with uh, Firefox for Android, which was running a regular extension and companion was connecting to, uh, to the node on my phone and that worked. Uh, and just, uh, Raphael, yeah, good point about hamburger menu or, or some similar thing. Um, this is sort of like trend this fine line because we've got, we have a bunch of concept sketches for desktop and web UI in general that at this point are about a year old that came from Eric Rani, um, which need to be, like a lot of stuff has changed since then and our understanding of what we're trying to solve for has changed since then. But there's a lot of really good kernels of truth in there. And um, that is on at least my longer term agenda to try to unify some of that into a more complete design teardown. This is more get things into a good, really usable state before pinning services ship. But in an ideal world, yeah, I would love to spend Q4 doing a full teardown of this UI. <laughs> we shall see what the future holds. Cool. Um, pinning settings page almost complete, I've been told. <laughs> Yeah, so I've merged everything to Epic uh, slash pinning integration. And we already have all the models for adding new integrations and custom integrations and showing the integrations. What we need to do now is uh, the screen for editing that integration and also the pop-up for deleting the integration. I'm not entirely sure if we have the edit integration screen do we, Jessica? I think we do, but I'm not uh, sure The edit integration screen just brings back that modal because it's the same thing because it's only those three, only those three parameters that you're changing. Oh yeah, it, that's true. I, I forgot I wanted to ask something. So we're saying that we're not storing the secret API key, right, Lido? We're not uh, storing not any of that. Right. Yeah, so... Oh, this is an so, interesting... So is there a way to get the API back from Go APFS or should we just ask the user to simply add it again if he wants to edit? Or if we can just partially edit something like only the name or um, only... Yeah, so here, here's the thing. Uh, what um, the current security model uh, when it comes to secrets in Go APFS config and accessing that over HTTP API is that you can send, you can like set value, you can overwrite existing value, but once you set it, it's impossible to read it back over HTTP API. So that means you can like display those like uh, asterisks. Uh, and if you submit a change with just like name uh, or endpoint, that will not change the API key, but the moment you change API key, that will overwrite it. Um, yeah. User that, won't see the, the API key anyway, because it would, should be like uh, hidden. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like could, we, could we do something like, I don't know, the value could be, oh my God, this private key is not stored here. So something like that. So it just goes on asterisk. And if it, the user edits it, we update the, the private key as well. You know what I mean? That would be... The most seamless way of doing it for the user, yeah. So as long as the user doesn't touch the private API key, it yeah. doesn't affect him anyway. If he wants to update the private API key, he should be able to do it as well. Yeah, so I mean that's we, that's the same that's the same mental pattern that we experience every single time we go to a config page for a service for which we don't actually remember our passwords for. So we don't even run our mouse over the password box with its little dots in it. So, I mean, I think that's would be completely acceptable. Yeah, like when user starts editing the password, it, it just, just like, it's empty box. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, yeah, so that's like a low level concern. Um, I still, we still don't have a good picture of how exact ma mappings will look like. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully next time we'll, we'll see something. All right, thanks. And yeah, and then the delete integration doesn't do anything for now since everything is locked up, <laughs> but it is what it is. And that's it. Hopefully uh, we'll get uh, some ETA uh, like this week or next week where we, when we will have the actual API uh, and we'll make a, a decision, uh, is it worth like creating a mock-up service or before that lands? Because uh, we don't want to be blocked by, by that fact and we'll need something to interact with and test uh, in the, Go IPFS and JSA PFS as well. Um, so that's something we'll figure it out in the next week, probably. Um, I had a question that I forgot to ask. Uh, how well is Web UI tested? Uh, should I be worried uh, in terms of when I update a new IPFS API, should I like go and try to break it or is test supposedly gonna catch that? I'm pretty sure the tests are we got like a canary test for each screen. So okay. on for the status screen, uh, we expect the peer ID to be there. That means you are able to fetch the ID information of our API. Uh, same for files. We try to add a file and then confirm it's added to the listing, similarly to the peer screen and to save things. So there's a canary test for each screen. Uh, and yeah. that test runs in actual browser. We use Puppeteer in, in Chromium. Uh, so as long as like end-to-end -end tests pass, I would not worry. If some tests fail, it may be because uh, like structures changed and uh, the test expects something else. Uh, but if they pass, it should be fine. Okay. Yeah. And if you have any problems with end-to-end, -to -end, uh, ping me because I recently fix them so I, I have a fresh um, view. Right now I have the this key W or whatever the other thing is that only appears in the end-to-end -end test uh, that we talked about earlier. Uh, KY slash UMD. Oh yeah, yeah. It's possible, uh, it's possible that we use uh, HTTP client internally uh, for orchestrating uh, nodes as well. Um, there's this tool called IPFS D control, uh, which was created by Hugo and uh, older versions. It's possible that older versions depend on HTTP client, which used K KY. Uh, so that's why you see that. Maybe that if we upgrade to the latest IPFS control D, uh, the um, problem will go away. Is there any known workarounds to that problem? Like the reason I'm asking, I don't want to make two changes in one, so I could like yeah. somehow split them into. Yeah. Like honestly, since this is a known issue, maybe is that. Yeah, honestly, I don't remember. Time. But if you ask uh, Hugo, he may remember because he was like fixing that upstream. Okay. Or if you can enable CI test, and if it passes at least on some machines, that's also, I think, okay. But right now, it doesn't work on my machine, and I don't know what happens on CI. So it's kind of worrisome. Yeah, I think I, I definitely can, can take a look. Uh, it's on the, it, it's the PR with uh, removing uh, Redux bundle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know why it's not running tests, but if you can yeah. get it to run. Uh, I'll take a look great. and if not, I will ping Hugo or someone, yeah. Cool. Um, always, yeah. <laughs> um, highlights? Uh, I think we are at the end of the agenda, so we are super efficient this week. Um, highlights are IPFS companion beta shipped and I will Screen my screen, share my screen <laughs> now. Uh, this long version number uh, means a new beta release, and this new beta release improves uh, 
error page uh, for protocol handling in Firefox. And it also uh, is the first version which uh, opens release notes on the update. So now users will see what's changed. Uh, thanks, Jessica, for improving uh, those protocol handler screens. Um, the main problem here was uh, uh, when a user enters CIDV0, which is case sensitive, all those identifiers which start with QM. Um, when you enter that in the location bar um, and hit enter, um, browser vendors force lowercase. And that's a problem because the identifier uh, starting with QM is case sensitive, it's base 58. So now a user gets this uh, human readable uh, error page which uh, lets them convert CID using CID inspector or command line and fix it. And now when we upgrade to a new version, uh, release notes are displayed um, to tell user what's up, what's new. Uh, that's it on IPFS Companion. Oh no, we got rejected from Chrome Web Store. <laughs> I, I forgot about that. Uh, and so while you load that, I will note that the release notes are a preference. So if you don't want to get bugged by the release notes every time, you can switch that off in the prefs. Oh yeah, totally. I think I got this here. Uh, yep, so it's here. You got this toggle, show release notes on update. If you don't want them, just disable them. That's it. Uh, that being said, you can make a release, but if Google does not accept it, no one will see that release. So like a week ago, we got rejected um, with vague automated response. I suspected it was before because of this white space, but honestly, we never changed it and we had multiple releases with it, with this. So turns out uh, it was like internal mistake on the Google part, um, which is a bit concerning because I got a browser extension and for some reason it's suddenly taken down. The good thing is that we got a beta channel, which is a separate extension. It's a separate extension ID. So uh, what I do, I make a better release. Uh, if there are any change, significant changes, uh, we can like test the review process on the beta channel. And even if it gets taken down, our stable channel is still there. So that's how we handle that. Um, if uh, you like to live on the bleeding edge, uh, install our beta channel, it's fun. <laughs> um, I believe we had, gosh, where is it? Is it here? Uh, I believe uh, Rafael had this uh, uh, animation to demo. Yes. Do you want me to screen? Sure. One sec. Is that the uh, new progress bar? I had this on my MacBook and I switched to my desktop right now. So I need to open it again. Sorry about that. Should I like try to open it? It's all right. I'm already opening. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, background here is that we have like multiple places where we would like to have a, some sort of like a progress indicator. Uh, personally, I I found a way for like companion to this temporarily display a page. Uh, sort of like a splash screen when people try to load the content which not which is not on their local node and needs to be like looked up over DHT, which may take a few seconds or sometimes a few minutes. Uh, so we could introduce sort of like a loading page. Uh, so this animation is pretty useful for something like that. Yeah, Rafael. Cool. Yeah, so here it is. People didn't like the one with the text. I prefer the one with the text, but all right. <laughs> So basically, was, this is, it could also have a small version and a big version. So it fits on any screen. You can have it on a as a small loading screen as well. And it should work like this. Or we can have it on a full page. Oops. And it should also work as a full page loading. So yeah. Cool. 
I was expecting the animations that Dietrich shared on internet. What? Sorry. Oh uh, Dietrich yeah. Dietrich had a different one. Yeah, <laughs> on the Twitters. Yeah, that that was not me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a meme. <laughs> It, actually, it was you. <laughs> yeah. I made the call for it. <laughs> the ethic just know. added my image. <laughs> you never know what will ship in the final version. So. <laughs> <laughs> you could have a random face of one of us. So Jeez. Since I'm the one implementing it, you, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> we could like, pick uh, avatars of IPFS contributors and like display yeah. random folks i think this meeting is over <laughs> the the so i'm getting all your peer ids and when i found them on web ui i'm gonna launch your own face on the loading animation so only you can see it <laughs> or someone else's face like chat roulette all right folks i think it's uh, we are at the end of highlights and i don't see any additional agenda items so i will stop the recording now uh thank you for watching this if you are watching this or listening to this uh and see you hear you in two weeks all right bye bye